season opener at Target Field, North Dakota State quarterback Trey Lance made a big splash in his first start, accounting for six touchdowns as the Bison rolled to a 57-10 victory. This afternoon, an old foe from 75 miles north makes its way to the Fargo Dome as two old rivals meet once again. It's North Dakota and North Dakota State coming up next. Get your horns out! Tailgating in the parking lot. Now that clock is ticking down. The boys are ready to go. The energy in here's electric. Let's get on with the show. Get your horns up. The green and gold are back in town. Get your horns up. Pumped up and ready to throw down. Toss that coin up in the air. Bring the boys up to the line. Hold your horns up high because it's rising time. Gate City Bank Field at the Fargo Dome, the 112th meeting between North Dakota State and North Dakota, a series that dates back to 1894, just the second meeting all time in the Division I era. North Dakota joining the Missouri Valley next season, and then their conference rivals once again. It's about time, and I know this isn't a conference game, but this, as I mentioned, I think is the rebirth of what is going to be a tremendous rivalry once again. When you're talking about teams that played back in the 1800s, it's a shame that they ha that we had that gap and only played once since 2003. There's a look at Matt Entz, head coach for North Dakota State, his first true home game. And there's a look at Bubba Schweiger in his sixth season, a Zealand North Dakota native has come back to his old stomping grounds after a spell at Southern Illinois under Dale Lennon. Was also the head coach of Minnesota Duluth. Back deep is Ty Brooks, another North Dakota boy, an electric return man. UND won the toss, elected to defer. Brady Stevens will get set to kick things off here this afternoon. Sold out crowd of nearly 19,000 on hand to witness this one here today at the Fargo Dome. Time for another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Short kick, Brooks comes up to the 12 to take it and will follow his men up the middle before he is stuffed and finally ridden down after a nice run across the 30 yard line to the 32 yard line. Let's take a look at the Shields starting lineups. Trey Lance, Marshall, Minnesota. Dylan Radins, Becker, Minnesota. Zach Kubis, Dickinson, North Dakota. Carson Shooting, Rawl, North Dakota. Zach Johnson, Spring Lake Park, Minnesota. Cordell Volson, Belfour, North Dakota. Ben Ellison, Holly, Minnesota. Garrett Malstrom, Vergas, Minnesota. Cy Brooks, Fargo, North Dakota. Christian Watson, Tampa, Florida. Phoenix Sproles, New Hope, Minnesota. Right to the ground game for Brooks, who's continuing to push the pile forward to the 38-yard line, a pickup of about six yards on first down for the senior. The number one question for this UND defense today, can it handle the physicality of the Bison offensive line? See C.J. Siegel into the game as you take a look at Trey Lance, starting quarterback for North Dakota State. Tremendous debut, five carries, 116 yards, and two touchdowns on the ground. Was 10 of 11 for 185 yards and four touchdowns through the air. Brought to you by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by Beef Farmers and Ranchers. Lance, quick drop. Phoenix strolls across the 40-yard line, pushed out of bounds by Siegel, and that'll bring up third and two. Now they'll inch it ahead to the 41-yard line, so third and one coming up. Here is the starting lineup, sponsored by Shields for the North Dakota defense. Two really good middle linebackers, Noah Larson, Donald Rogers. The guys up front, outside of Bennett, pretty inexperienced. Solid secondary with Kennedy, Bluebaugh, Jay Lawrence, the senior from Moorhead, Minnesota, also in the starting lineup. On third down, Brooks just has enough as Rogers brought him down, but that should move the sticks across the 42. 
Quite a bit of pressure, if pressure's the right word today, on those two linebackers you talked about, and Brian, you mentioned Rodgers and Larson. Those are the two guys that the defensive coordinator, Eric Schmidt, says they must perform today versus the run. If those two guys get beat on the second level, NDSU is going to have some huge plays on the ground today. Two tight ends, Gindorf and Ellison both in there here on first down. A stretch play to the right. And there's room for Dimitri Williams to midfield as he lowers the shoulder. Finally ridden out of bounds by Kennedy after a gain of close to eight. One of the near side defensive linemen is on the ground and also the Zeke linebacker, Lawrence. You see those two guys go down. They're the ones that have to try to cut this off from making it uh, as many as eight yards on that first down. So it's an excellent job by the Bison on the edge to take care of the two guys whose job is to try to prevent any issue from getting where it got. Lance, empty set boy. Nice catch by Dimitri Williams. Had to go up and get it. Nice hands, got a foot down. Siegel on the coverage up to the 46. And that is a first down for North Dakota State. Trey Lance this summer, during summer workouts, as we look at the Nodak Insurance Company replay, without the coaches there, his, his arm got a little long. His passing motion got long. Well, then Bison, throughout fall camp, we're trying to wor work on it to shorten it up and get that throw shorter because the shorter his arm is, the more accurate it becomes. Coach Hedberg said he only missed once last week. Lance. Takes the jet sweep to Brooks and then takes off and dives ahead down to the 44-yard line. Mason Bennett getting in on that tackle. Nine sacks in 2018, too shy of the Division I program record for Mason Bennett. And he's two and a half shy of the all-time record in the D1 era. He did have one and a half sacks last week against Drake. Well, I mentioned Eric Schmidt, the defensive coordinator. He was uh, He's one of the two guys that <laughs> he was behind in the record. Wes Atkinson also ha had uh, 11 sacks in a season. Play action for Lance. He's going to air it out deep. One-on-one -on -one coverage. It is incomplete. Going for Christian Watson. Good coverage on the play by Hayden Bluebaugh. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Here's Watson working himself downfield. Now, at this point, Lance has just a couple of options. He had Josh Babich releasing right up the hash marks on the tight end, and at first I thought that he might have looked a little bit more open. They gave Watson the opportunity to catch the deep ball, but it didn't happen. Three receivers to the high side of your screen. Kaporis in the slot. Ellison to the bottom side of your screen, the tight end. Lance with time, stepping into it. He's going to take a shot. Man, wide open. Caught inside the five, down to the three-yard line. And that is Kaporis. Zach Mathis. Oh, Mathis, excuse me. Got down there. Had his first career reception. Young man out of Florida that came into this program. And a tall receiver at 6'6". Lance just looking on that half of the field the whole way and what a separation Mathis got from the corner almost able to stretch it in you go right back to the well the last play to Watson just about worked this one did on third down so that'll bring up first and goal powering the pile up the middle touchdown North Dakota State Dimitri Williams Well, Brian, the long pass connection gets you there, but the touchdown run is what has UND very worried. Just look at how physical on a power play big Zach Johnson is pulling, getting inside, right behind Nash Jensen, and then the running back just gets lost in kind of a wave of green. Here's that formation on the extra point. North Dakota State ran a two-point conversion out of it last week against Butler on the opening touchdown. Instead, Hendricks will get down and get set to hold. And it is booted through, and North Dakota State has a 7-0 lead on the opening drive. Griffin Crosa, we should mention, is the kicker today. Jake Reinholds, who is a starting kicker, heard a quad last week in the opener, so Crosa, the true freshman, is the guy that will handle those duties here today. There's Williams finishing it off, and boy, when the other team wins and says, all right, we're going to put your offense on the field first, and then you do that to them, 
that really makes everyone on the Bison sideline very happy and Bubba Schweigert's team already down before it has an opportunity to run an offensive play. I really thought it was it, it was interesting and uh, and I liked it how Tyler Roll went back to back big plays. Yep. So North Dakota State on the opening drive, nine plays, 68 yards and 340. Williams with a three yard run, but it was the catch from Mathis that really set it up on third down, a 41 yard reception down to the two yard line. Garrett Wegner, the punter will handle the kick off duties today. Normally handled by Reinholz. Taken at the two yard line and trying to run behind his blockers. That time was Brock Boldman, who was a quarterback in this system, now moved to wide receiver, returning to kickoff here. Let's take a look at the North Dakota State defense sponsored by Shields. Logan McCormick, Kimberly, Wisconsin. Cole Karch, Germantown, Wisconsin. Jack Darnell, Champlin, Minnesota. Derek Tuska, Warner, South Dakota. Aaron Mercadell, Oakland, California. Jackson Hickey, Parker, North Dakota. Jabril Cox, Kansas City, Missouri. Marquise Bridges, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Michael Tuxi, Indianapolis, Indiana. James Hendricks, Bemidji, Minnesota. Josh Hayes, Lakeland, Florida. Parted on proud, coming to life here on first down. Zimmerman quickly slings it out to Wanzik. Jabril Cox quickly out there to close, and no gain on first down. Well, you're trying to get Wanzik one-on-one. -on -one. If you get him one-on-one -on -one against the best defensive player in the FCS, that's not a good move. Here's a look at Zimmerman making his first ever collegiate start. Fifth year senior, this time we'll hand it off. Johannesson, James Johannesson played his high school football just down the road at Fargo South, a teammate of Ty Brooks, and he gains three up to the 29. And Zimmerman, as we talked about, brought to you by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by Beef Farmers and Ranchers. Sponsored, excuse me, by the North Dakota Beef Commission. You can see he played very well when he came in for Ketteringham after the injury last week. Zimmerman, a senior, but very little game experience. Started his career at Eastern Washington, then played a year at Fresno Fresno City, City College. Yep. Zimmerman hanging in there. Now we'll go for Wanzik. Tips on the jump ball by James Hendricks. And a three and out for North Dakota. Looked like zone coverage with Josh Hayes underneath and then playing center field where he did have an interception on a play similar to this last week at Target Field. James Hendricks, 10 career picks for Hendricks. Ball just hung up there a little bit too long. And Hendricks flows quickly. So the Bison opening drive, exactly what NDSU wanted. UND's opening drive, three and out. North Dakota will punch it away. Peterson short hunt bounces at the 37 and takes a North Dakota hop down to the 29 yard line and that's where the Bison will have it leading 7 nothing on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard 950 to go we're just getting started here at the Fargo Dome Seven nothing North Dakota State. The Bison taking over on their own 29 yard line. Get again to the outside for Brooks. Boy, nice pursuit from the backside that time by Bennett. No gain on first down. That is what UND likes to do when you run the stretch play, or in this case, an outside zone away. The backside defensive end will run down that play, and Bennett has the speed to do it. Not a secret, that's the way, if you remember Southern Illinois, the way Southern played defense when Bubba and those guys were down there, it's it's a, almost the same defense. Lance to drop back this time, and he's gonna go deep again. Watson with Siegel on him. A little bit of hand fighting down the sideline as they run stride for stride incomplete. And Tyler Roll 
And Trey Lance not afraid to take some shots downfield here early. That was a play I was told to look for. A Nodak Insurance Company replay, a one-on-one -on -one to the boundary side. The boundary in football means the short side of the field. If Watson can have an opportunity to get downfield, NDSU was going to let him try to go win one of those 50-50 balls. Evan Holm was expected to start today. We have seen have Siegel, seen the redshirt freshman, starting at corner. And those Bison corners have been real aggressive with their hands down low, too. Hands on some jerseys. Pressure on Lance. And down he goes back at the 25-yard line. And that is the outside linebacker, Jackson Turner, coming on the blitz. Turner is what defensively is called the stud linebacker. And also, UND uses the term Zeke linebacker. As a general rule of thumb, the stud linebacker, Turner, is the better pass rusher of the two. We saw his pass rushing skills to force the third or the fourth and long. Yeah, Turner, the third leading tackler last season for North Dakota. He's a talented athlete. Those two positions, those outside linebacker positions, two of the best athletes on UND's team. So Wegner will boot this one away. Mikey Greibel back deep inside his own 35. Makes the fair catch at the 33-yard line. And North Dakota will have its second possession right there when we come back. Still 7-0 on the Ag Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. North Dakota second drive from the 33. Motion man is Garrett Mogg. Inside handoff to Johannesson, who has a crease. He is dragged down. Good pickup on first down of close to six yards. Johannesson is a one cut and go type of a runner. Let's go to Ryan Gellner. Hey guys, on North Dakota's last punt, Mason Hofset, a backup linebacker who's a sophomore, ended up on the bottom of the pile. He now has a hamstring injury and will not return for the North Dakota State. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. First International Bank and Trust sideline report. Travis Toivinen with the reception brings up third and one. That's what UND does. They brought Toivonen across the face of the quarterback, faked to him, and then threw it to him a little later. Johannesson powering ahead across the 45 for a first down. It's not that UND has two playbooks, but they almost have two different call sheets depending on which running back is in. Johannesson goes to the sideline right here. There's a set of plays that, that really benefit him. And then when McKinney comes in as the tailback, then there's another set of plays designed for a little smaller, a little quicker type of runner. See James Kayser coming in to play linebacker here, a backup safety. David Braun, defensive coordinator, said we're going to see this in some of these formations. Zimmerman flushed. Derek Tutka giving chase, and he will just throw it away, and he is plastered on the sideline after he threw the football. We'll bring up second and ten. Let's take a look at the North Dakota offense, sponsored by Shields. Talked about Zimmerman. Johannesson has already had a handful of carries. Outs Cloyd, the tight end. They do not play a lot of double tight ends, and Cloyd is mainly the guy. That offensive line is kind of pieced together. Nathan Duan is not the regular center. Patrick Rooney is the guy, but he's still out due to some concussion issues. That offensive line is not known for its physical nature. They have not and probably don't think throughout the course of the year they'll be able to line up and just move teams. Brock Bowman, the intended target off the play action. Marquise Bridges closing quick will bring up third and long. Well, UND throws to Brock Bowman. We've been led to believe that Brock Bowman sometime throughout the course of this game will be the quarterback. We'll see if that happens. There's the fake. And throwing a little bit too high, but there is a flag on the field on the far side. Throwing right at the 45-yard line. Motion. Now they'll give Matt Entz the option to see if he want to take the penalty. Take the penalty or bring up third down and long. Interesting part of the field. I wouldn't be surprised if you make it second down. Illegal formation. Five players from the backfield. Offense. Five yard penalty. Remain second down. Take the penalty. I guess still second down. Whether you made it third. So second and 15. Okay. Here, here's, here's the guy you mentioned, James Kayser. He is normally a, a strong safety. But Kayser is playing linebacker today to keep Jabril Cox playing that nickel spot. 
So instead of bringing Bridges in to play the nickel, one of the adjustments the Bison are making against a quick team. Zerman, quick drop, completes. As Garen Mogg makes his first reception, game six to the 46. And now here's a word from Tobolsi. Tobolsi, family owned and operated for over 90 years. How do you stay in business that long? Hard work and integrity. Tobolt Seed offers Thunder Seed and List Soybeans, Roundup Ready to Extend Soybeans, Liberty Link GT27 Soybeans, and Thunder Seed Corn. Third and nine for North Dakota. A defensive line is going to gear up to try to get after the quarterback, see if they blitz. Nope. Zimmerman hangs in there. High and almost intercepted right in and out of the hands of Michael Tutsi. Looked like the Bison at the line of scrimmage accomplished what they want to do today, and that is make the feet of Zimmerman move a little bit. A double X. Both defensive ends cut inside. And put a little pressure. Show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and check card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. Second punt for North Dakota. Peterson hangs this one up. Another fair catch called for. And Trevor Height, the returner. Took a couple of returns last week in the game against Butler. And taking the first one there. Bison football, the 20-yard line, leading 7-0 when we come back. First and 10, North Dakota State from the 20-yard line. Running formation. And dragging down by the ankles there was Jordan Kennedy on Williams after a gain of just one. Let's take a look at the... Gate City Bank fan cam. Send us your home or watch party picks and we'll show them in the fourth quarter wherever you're at. If you're not here in the dome, you're home, you're watching somewhere, send them to the Valley News Live Facebook page. Here's a look at Dan Marlette, former North Dakota State linebacker in the crowd today. 22 personnel on first down. Now the Bison motion to empty. And off outside. Room to run for Ty Brooks, and he's close to a first down, a yard and a half short. We'll bring up third and one. Jordan Candy in on another tackle for North Dakota. Rogers also helping out on that tackle for Nodak, North Dakota. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Brooks coming in, trying to read the outside blocks. Next there, Sproles had one. Ben Elfson, good to see him out there playing today. He did not play last week. He had a block, and I think Mathis was also out uh, on the edge trying to make a block there and picking up almost enough for the first. Lance is going to run on third and one. Picking his way across the 30-yard line up to the 35 before he's taken down by Jackson Turner. That will move the chains for North Dakota State. Jackson Turner on the carry. That's another On the sideline, Ryan Gellner standing by with a special guest who had a long NFL career after his time at NDSU. Yeah, he really did, guys. Ramon Umber is back in the Fargo Dome for the first time since you played here, which is ages ago. Spent nine years in the NFL. Welcome back. Thank you. Good to be here. What's this like when you look around? Things have changed inside the Dome since you were last here. Yeah, a lot of things have changed. It's great to be back. I mean, obviously, the fans are still strong and love being here, love playing here, and it's just great to be back in this atmosphere again. All those years in the NFL, Never really forgot where you came from, did you? Oh, never did. I was, I'm a bison at heart. No, it's going to be a bison to the day I die. And, you know, it's just great to be a bison and always going to be there. You didn't get a chance to play in this rivalry. You told me, though, you wish you would have. Oh, yeah, definitely. I wish we would have played in this rivalry. Just, you know, it's experience. It's history and it's a rivalry. So anytime you get a chance to play in a rivalry game and want to continue it, that's something you want to do. Maybe the coolest thing in your NFL career, I'm going to have you show this to the camera, guys. This is last year's Super Bowl ring, yep. a Super Bowl champion. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Feels good to be a champion. Hold that up one more time for us. Guys, this is a First International Bank and Trust sideline report. Super Bowl champion, Ramon Umber. Welcome back, buddy. Thank you. Back upstairs. Now, we thought those North Dakota State championship <laughs> rings were big. That almost is a bracelet. 
Yeah, they don't make them small, that's for sure. <laughs> they don't make them cheap either. You got to earn those babies. Congratulations to Ramon. He had a really good NFL career. Oh, he was fun to watch here. He he was a lot like Jabril Cox and his ability to move in space and, and tackle in space. Umber was awesome. Play action for Lance on third. Down, and Ben Ellison left alone at the 45-yard line. And he has a first down to the 40. Kennedy coming up to make the stop. And North Dakota State converts again on third down. This is a neat little crossing pattern between Malstrom and then the tight end. Here's Malstrom in the middle. He pulls the safety away, allowing Lance the opportunity to survey the field. It was open a little bit further out to the flat. Enough, enough of an opportunity from the offensive line to give your quarterback a chance to see that play develop because it's one where your O-line needs to hold up. Back to the eye formation here on first down, and it's Williams bouncing it outside, now cutting it back up inside, and he has another first down, gain of 15 yards on first down to the 26 for Dimitri Williams, pushed out by Kennedy. But someone had a really nice block in the edge, and I thought it was actually Noah Gindorf. There he is. Yep, Gindorf just flattens the guy, allows the Dimitri Williams to, to churn past the first down yardage and more. India shoes uh, on the edge, meaning the tackles, which, of course, the Bison have really good ones. Raiden's on the left and Volson on the right, with help, are able to get to that seam on the outside. Stretch play to the bottom again. Brooks wanted to bounce it out and then cut off by Rogers and no gain on first down. Good pursuit by the Fighting Hawks defense that time. Noah Larson also got in to help make that tackle. Rogers plays that Sam linebacker position, lines up to the offense's strong side, usually the side where the tight end is. Showing some pretty good speed. He had a little bit of a gap to get there, and he got there. Lance to throw. Stepping up. Now he's going to take off and run with it. To the 20. Got a great block on the edge. Trey Lance inside the 10 down to the 8-yard line. It was Ellison sealing things off as the Bison continue to move the sticks. Buying, building, or refinancing. Start with a Gate City Bank, Blue Standard pre-approval, and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCity.Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. It's going to be so much fun to watch Lance develop as a quarterback. He has such a tremendous uh, combination of both strength and speed, especially in the running game where we've seen it the most. Lance is going to run with it again. Wide open lane, touchdown! Talk about owning the heart of the defense. That's exactly what the Bison certainly did in that these last two runs, especially. Here's the one for Lance. He's looking, looking, nothing there. Muscles his way through, picks up a block on the outside, and then brings it inside the 10. And then the touchdown. This is a design quarterback run. Look at, look at one of the guards is trying to find somebody to block. I mean, the guy was Nash Jensen, didn't even have anybody to block. Prosa converts on another extra point, and it's a 14-0 lead here for the Bison. Boy, what a dominant effort by that offensive line, especially on that touchdown run. Well, so far here in the first quarter, North Dakota State 144 total yards, North Dakota just 22. That's Zach Johnson, who was... It's a quarterback power. You saw that because Johnson pulled out and was trying to go right up there. And again, Lance is trying to determine where Johnson's block is going to take the guy, and then he will make a move off of that. He didn't have to move at all <laughs> because Johnson didn't have anybody to block. They're already wiped clean. Here's a look at the Bobcat scoring recap. Ten plays, 80 yards, and five minutes and 35 seconds. Trey Lance. Already five carries for 28 yards and a touchdown. North Dakota State four of five on third down. And Brock Boltman, Cam McKinney now back deep once again as Wegner gets sent to boot it away. <laughs> That's a clever one. Also accurate too. Another Peterson 
Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. McKinney will take a knee inside his own end zone. And North Dakota will start this drive from the 25-yard line. I know it's early in the game. We're not even to the end of the first quarter, but this to me seems like a really important drive for that team in white. I think that offense needs to stay on the field for a while. Take some pressure off your defense who's just gotten rolled at that last that last time and give the uh, Fighting Hawks defense a chance to regroup a little bit on the sideline and talk things over. Well in this first quarter North Dakota State has had the football 10 minutes and 49 seconds. North Dakota's had it for just 337. Johansson met right in the hole, bounces off of Jackson Hankey and then gang tackled. After that, Aaron Mercadell got in there to finish him off after a gain of one. Even though Hankey didn't make the tackle, he helped make the play because the hard thing to do with Johansson is slow down that momentum. Then your other two linebackers, Mercadell 55 and 42 Jabril Cox, are there to clean things up. So that guy is multi talented. He's as good as it gets. 91 tackles last year to lead the team. It was 10th in the Missouri Valley. He also had four sacks, four interceptions, and two touchdowns. First 15 minutes are in the books. It's 14-0 North Dakota State, second and nine for the Fighting Hawks when we return. Second and nine for North Dakota. From its own 26. And there's Boltman in that quarterback out of the Wildcat. And he takes off with it and has a first down up to the 41 yard line. Gain of 15 there for a guy that came in as a quarterback, moved a wide receiver, but has been used in a variety of ways. And Danny Froyan did give us a, a little bit of a heads up to say don't be surprised at all to see him at quarterback. Most of the time when you see a Wildcat formation, which we just saw there, that it is a, going to be a run play. But also do not be shocked at all if Boltman throws out of that formation sometime today. Zimmerman back in this time with Johansson behind him in the pistol. Fake screen, then the give to Johannesson, and he is upended by Jabril Cox. He's able to gain four up to the 45. Johannesson, again, started off at Minnesota for a couple of years, came back to North Dakota, was a three, part of that three-headed monster that the Fighting Hawks had in previous years with Brady Oliveira and also John Santiago. He did slim down, lost about 10 pounds from a year ago, and is now being counted on to be kind of the every down back for this Fighting Hawks squad. Cam McKinney on the little shuttle pass, working off a block on the edge from Cloyd. And look at the good speed there for the sophomore. Originally from Beaumont, Texas, played a senior season up in Seattle and had a really good run. And North Dakota able to find him. And he's one of the few guys in this team that he's really a game breaker, has good speed. This is where McKinney's trying to get. Cloy makes a nice block on the edge. Alex Cloy really kind of changed his body to fit this offense. He was a much bigger guy. He leaned down. He's 255, has to play more in space. Number 88, he got the key block. And a flag comes out by the White Hat. Let's see what the penalty's all about here. Your referee today is Jeremy Valentine. Prior to the foul, charge timeout, North Dakota. They're first of the half, 30 seconds in length. So North Dakota calling a timeout here on first and 10. Nodak Insurance Company replay. This is the Wildcat formation. You take your normal quarterback, and this place, Zimmerman, he goes off somewhere on one of the sides. He's out of the play. 
and you bring a guy who's not normally in a, a, a quarterback per se, and that is, in this case, Boltman. Boltman most of the time is a runner. So you bypass the handoff to get Boltman an opportunity to get another hat in the play. And again, as we mentioned, Boltman was a quarterback, moved to the wide receiver position. We think he'll probably throw it sometime throughout the course of the day. But your normal quarterback, Andrew Zimmerman, when he's not lined up behind center, it's called the Wildcat. Austin Gordon in a tailback this time. And Gordon getting his first carry, gaining three down to the 44. Gordon, a guy that's bounced all over the place, came in as a running back, was moved to linebacker, now this season back to running back again. Just a textbook tackle out of your middle linebacker there, Jackson Hankey. That was just played perfectly the way he kept his shoulders square to the line. Shuffle off to his right. That's Hankey 52 there. He had to go to his right to make that play. Stayed squared, only allowed three yards. Well done. Just, just perfect technique. Zimmerman firing and almost intercepted, breaking on the football was Marquise Bridges. Wanzik the intended target. That was the right read from Zimmerman because NDSU loaded up to the quarterback's right. So as soon as he saw Mercadell and everyone else coming from, from his right, he knows he has man coverage on the left side, just didn't have enough arm to get it out there in time. Here comes the Bison. Here's Mercadell flying in there. So he can't get there, but he also influenced the play. Crowd coming to life here on third and seven. Dalton G out to the side. Quick slant, well designed and executed for North Dakota quickly. Wanzik with the reception down to the 29, and it's a first down. Really nice job by UND to help clear the linebacker to give Zimmerman an opportunity to make a clean look to his left. Wanzik, the best wide receiver, with an inside release. Bridges playing the nickel. Shedding more to the outside, but no linebacker in the sight of the quarterback. Well executed. Dawson Weber coming up to make the tackle for North Dakota State. Zimmerman throws it backwards, and now Lonzik wanted to throw it. Now he might just run and see what he can get. Not much. Hendricks forcing him out of bounds. A several buys and give chase. And Calling for a penalty down there was Nick Gazer, the defensive tackles coach. Maybe wanted a cut block. You could not get more wide open on that particular play than Travis Toivonen was. Wanzik couldn't see him. He was monster wide open, standing at the end at the uh, the end zone. But there's just no opportunity for Wanzik to see far enough and quick enough downfield. He was open. And to be honest, I thought we'd see more plays like that earlier in the game than we did here in the second quarter. Gordon gets the give, tripped up initially on the play by Bartholomew Ogbu and then finished off by Tutsi. Ogbu, the sophomore from Shiloh Christian coming in off on your left. He did what the coach David Braun said he wants his defensive line to do today. Run across the face of the offensive line. Don't mess around. Don't make a thud and a read. You just go. Try to get across the face of the UND line. That is not what UND wants to try to do. Play clock down to five as Zimmerman tries to get them organized. Empty formation here for Zimmerman. Quick drop, and finding a window there was Garrett Mon, and he makes the reception, and it's a big third down pickup on third and long for North Dakota to the 13-yard line. Toivonen makes the reception. Or excuse me, Garrett Mon makes the reception. But Boltman was in the slot, and Boltman kind of influences number 14. You see there, uh, Josh Hayes. And after that, Zimmerman gets drilled from the blind side really hard. That has to be numbered. <laughs> That's Tuska, number 91. It just seemed like the kind of hit not seeing the number that Tuska would put on a quarterback, but that was a pretty good read. He influenced Hayes on the, in the, in the slot to open up the outside. And North Dakota, a couple of big third down conversions on this drive. 
Zimmerman fires, and it's caught again, using his big body to shield off the defender and make the reception is Mog, and he's close to another first down, about a yard short. Mog was able to keep, uh, I believe it was Tutsi, on his back. Modak Insurance Company replay. Play is going off to the, your left as you see it. Influence to the right. Did you, did you see how much the Bison defense had to go on first snap? Good misdirection. Zimmerman dropping it off to Wanzik, looking for the corner, and is forced out of bounds on the play by Tutsi. And Mercadell. Pretty good closing speed by number 55, too, just to make sure Tutsi was first man there. And North Dakota continues with the tempo to go quickly here. It's first and goal for the Fighting Hawks. Johannesson bowling over a tackler and running in for the touchdown. That was exactly the type of drive that UND needed, I think, in this game. And Brian, you mentioned it on third down. That made the whole drive. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Johannesson's going to come right at you. And a beautiful block to get Jack Darnell moved. I didn't see who it was, but I believe it was right guard that made the nice block that moved Darnell away to clear the path to the end zone. Brady Leach on for the extra point. Played his high school ball just across the river at Moorhead, Minnesota, under Kevin Feeney. There is a flag on the extra point. Illegal formation, five players in the backfield. Number 78 of the kicking team, five yard penalty, re kick. Ben, ben Christian, Christian, yeah. Not far, far enough up on the line. Redshirt freshman played. In Grand Forks, hometown guy, staying close to home. So that'll back up the field goal unit five yards. We'll have to do it again. That's generally one of the guys on the outside. Yep, that's Christian right here, number 78. He was not far enough on the line. A little slow snap. Good job getting it down. And it's booted up and in. And there is yet another flag at the line of scrimmage. It might be the same call again. <laughs> Illegal formation. Yep. Offense number 78. Five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Re kick. Then you have to slide up. He's about a foot too far behind. Well, the Schweiger wondering what he's got to do here to get this seventh point on the board. Meanwhile, Leach is getting some good practice here. He's made. The first two extra points, See, can nope. you make another one? Christian has to get up because there's a guy outside of him, that man outside of him. The, there he's legal now, I think. So this would be a 30-yard field goal attempt now for the extra point. Leach boots it up. He was perfect in all three of them. And North Dakota finally has its seven points. Good drive here for the Fighting Hawks here early in the second quarter. 14-7 North Dakota State as Johannesson pulls his way in from a couple of yards out. A series that brings people together and tears them apart at the same time. <laughs> hey, after watching that replay, I want to give a shout out to Kyle Hergel. Yep. He's the guy who made the really nice block, number 61, the strongest guy on the team. Used that strength to help get Johannesson into the end zone. And Danny Freund saying he brings a certain level of nastiness to it. It's good for our offensive line. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kickoff your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed from the five yard line on the return and trying to juke to the outside was Ty Brooks tripped up at about the 27 yard line. Derek Murphy is the guy who tripped him up. Whether you're buying, building or refinancing, Gate City Bank home loans are locally approved, financed and serviced. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC equal housing lender. sorts of Fighting Hawk jerseys stacking up. That play for Adam Cofield, first carry of the day for the junior. Hunt on the stop. 
And Eric Schmidt playing some of his number twos in the front seven on this drive. Yeah, you, you just about have to just in <laughs> to, to survive physically in games like this that are so physical. And off to the outside, room to the outside with blockers for Christian Watson, who turns it back up, getting around Kennedy until he's finally pushed out of bounds by Ray Haas at midfield. Really nice work there by Ty Brooks on the edge, blocking. Ty coming out of the backfield to hand off to Watson and watch number 28 there. Gets hands in there, and then he then once he gets past that block, he goes up to get one more right there on uh, on the uh, safety. Leonard Nelson, nice job, Ty Brooks. And that is a part of his game that has developed really well the last couple of years. Ty Brooks has put on close to 30 pounds since he got to campus from Fargo South. Lance will throw it. Now he might take off and run with it. And he's going to be taken down for a loss. Coming up to make the sack there was Tyron Vreedy. Well, it depends how you want to say it. We were told yeah. before the game, back in the Netherlands, they say it Frida. But in the pronunciation guide, it's called Vreedy. So however you want to mention it. What you said. <laughs> but, but this is a coverage sack. UND's secondary and linebackers who were dropped in that there was a three-man route out there lance checked the two of the three off to his left tried to run it pocket closes on him here's the first gift for kobe johnson the electric freshman out of lawrenceville georgia gains 10 yards inside fighting hawk territory to the 42 yard line well, to get your running back to the edge, you have to close off the edge. I want you to check out that guy right there. That's Cordell Volson. He gets not only the, <laughs> the guy spun, he also hammers him down to the ground. That's Adam Steiger, the uh, stud linebacker on that side. So, yep, when you can smash and close that outside, as Volson did there, you free up the edge. Lenny Nelson's shaken up on the play, and he's taken off to the sideline. After the run, now North Dakota State up to 100 yards rushing in this football game. Lance is going to run. Got a good block on the edge again. And Lance, high step in his way to the 30. Look at the speed of Trey Lance down to the 8-yard line. Ben Elson is the man on the edge. Farm, or, excuse me, Dodak Insurance Company replay. There he is, taking care of the edge. And when you do that, big things happen up the sideline. How about Josh Babbage getting a block downfield on Kennedy as well to spring that thing? Your two tight ends help open up your quarterback for that big long run to get it down to the eight yard line. First time we've seen this formation this season. Delta formation, three in the backfield. Lance in the shotgun. Lance is going to run. North Dakota was ready for it that time. Flying into the backfield again was Breedy, and no game. Uh, two linebackers there. I think I think I saw 45 Cam Hunt in on that particular play as well. We saw Easton Stick really have some beautiful quarterback runs out of that formation, and the Bison trying to follow it up and uh, do it with Trey Lance. Boy, three tight ends here. Babbage, Ellison, and Gindorf all on there right now. All to the right. And UND does not like that formation. <laughs> timeout. And North Bubba King running down to half. call the timeout. Now let's step aside and take for a quick message from Shields. Oops. 
Well, we saw last week, Brian, the Bison offense just continue to churn out big play after big play. Averaged over 10 yards per play last week against Butler. And in 28 plays right now, the Bison are over 200 yards in total offense. So they're kind of right in that neighborhood once again. I've been spreading things out here now with three receivers in the formation. Lance is going to run again. Bouncing to the outside, trying to get the corner. Eludes one man and is ridden out of bounds by Kennedy at the three. Bison continue to pull, guys. This is Nash, Jensen, along with Elson. They try to combo on one block, and that puts Lance just against everyone else in a white jersey off to the right, and he almost got there. Third and goal from the two for North Dakota State. Now under five minutes to go in the first half. And DSU trying to answer UND's first touchdown. Lance faked the run and then threw it out to the end zone. Ben Ellison wide open. Touchdown. It was Mr. Touchdown last year, and here he picks up his first of the year in the first game that he has played. He is dealing with a little bit of an ankle, did not play last week, started practicing this week, and he's full and healthy. But the success of the quarterback run sets up Elson to be that wide open. Boy, really good play call there on third and goal. Rosa knocks through the extra point, and North Dakota State answers the North Dakota drive with a touchdown drive of its own. Trey Lance doing work on the ground. How about the little fake in the pass to his big tight end? 14 point lead for the Bison. North Dakota State. Two yard touchdown pass from Trey Lance to Ben Ellison. Eight plays, 73 yards. Big response for the Bison offense after North Dakota went down to score. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off the final season with Peterson Farm Seed. Boltman from his own goal line follows a lane and keeps the legs moving. Solid return up to the 30 yard line. Let's go to Ryan Gellner for a sideline update brought to you by First International Bank and Trust. Hey guys, it is that First International Bank and Trust sideline report. The Bison defense will take the field. Right now, going up against UND without James Hendricks, who has suffered a concussion. He will not be back in the game. Look for number 27, Dawson Weber, to fill that free safety spot. Guys? All right, thanks so much, Ryan. Yep, Weber is out there. He's number 27. There he is right here. That's Dawson. Zimmerman, the little shovel pass again. Mog, the recipient this time. North Dakota State ready for it. And coming in to make the tackle was Jackson Henke. Sophomore linebacker out of Park River. When asked this week, which way does Park River lean in this rivalry? He said, well, it's a little bit more UND. Nodak Insurance Company replayed. Jackson, he just did, he, he made the right read. If you saw his initial read, check how, how hard he sprints to get to this point. Then he just does what linebackers do, and that's make a tackle. But without James Hendricks in there, communication could be the key. He, along with Hanky, are the two guys that need to get the defense on the right page. Zimmerman dropping it off to Croy at his tight end. Closing quickly that time was Dawson Weber, who was in there for Hendricks. Gain of six will bring up third in about eight. Also good to see number 99 run out there, and he's probably been in a little bit, but Spencer Wagey right there playing a defensive tackle position. This is the first time that Wagey has played this year. Four receivers in the formation for Zimmerman and the Fighting Hawk offense. He's going to take a shot downfield and overshooting Mog. Destin Talbert in coverage for North Dakota State, and the Fighting Hawks will have to punt it away. Show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and check card. Visit gatecity.bank slash mycards. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. Right. 
Trevor Height at about his own 35-yard line. And he said to take this punt from Peterson. Hanging it up there high and deep. Nice punt there for Peterson as Height makes a fair catch at the 28-yard line. 3-10 to go in the first half. Bison with the football and a two-touchdown lead here at the Fargo Dome. North Dakota State first and 10 from the 28-yard line. See how aggressive the Bison get here with three minutes to go in the half. That's the running game. Ty Brooks stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Looked like Blue Ball and also Jay Lawrence coming in there to help make that tackle. During the commercial after the last touchdown, we just happened to have the cameras on Bubba Schweigert and Eric Schmidt along the sideline and the anguish uh, that you saw on the face of those two gentlemen <laughs> about uh, NDSU's physicality in la that last drive. It's like, oh my goodness, what are we going to have to do? Obviously, they're trying to make some adjustments to prevent that. Lance fakes one way and then running to the other side, Danell Rogers giving chase and forcing him out of bounds two yards short of the first down maybe four yards short of the first down they're gonna mark him out at the 34. here's Bubba <laughs> talking with one of the officials but the intensity it takes to to hang and try to to play this game <laughs> Zach Johnson by the way with a really nice block in the last play North Dakota State not in too much of a hurry here in case they do not convert. You don't want to leave too much time here for the Fighting Hawks. Lance to throw. Under pressure. Can't get away this time. And coming in was Jay Lawrence. And it also looked like he was helped a little bit by the nose tackle, Jalen Morrison. Jalen Morrison at number two. Jay Lawrence. And the final timeout for North Dakota taken here with 142 to go in the half. When Lance couldn't get the ball out on time, you also saw Noah Larson in there up the middle too, putting a little bit pressure uh, along the legs. The, pl the play obviously broke down to UND's favor. Time now for the Gate City Bank fan cam. And again, send us your home or watch party picks and we'll try to get those on in the fourth quarter. thing that David Braun told us in the conversation this week is you're going to see a lot more movement from us inside. Try to get them moving a little bit if they struggle. And Danny Freund on the other side said the same thing. We're going to show all sorts of different things and run a lot of different plays with the same personnel groupings. But the key, he always said, is having our five top playmakers on the field with the ability to make plays at the same time. He goes, for us, it's not about run pass. It's just about getting the playmakers in a place for them to make plays in space. Which for UND was easy to do last week. A little tougher this week. Wegner will boot this one away. Greidel back at his own 28. Oof, coming in and making a play on that one, I believe, was Siegel. Greidel makes the fair catch at the 32. Fighting Hawks, decent field position here to try to get down the field and get some points here before halftime. talked about the new offensive scheme for North Dakota LT and, and it is dramatically different dramatically different and, and a new offensive line coach as well who was the young man that came in was a GA under Tim Polisek at Iowa so they spent a lot of time just being good at four or five different things not trying to overload these guys with too many complex schemes Bison playing nickel Little pass ahead it looked like the intended target there was McKinney Pocket started to break down. I think Logan McCormick on the edge was able to make a move and then he's tried to shuffle that thing ahead. The North Dakota State does not have any sacks today. North Dakota has three here in the first half. The key to that, though, is not allowing 
Zimmerman to plant and be under tempo to be able to throw that ball. You saw as soon as his, his feet started moving, quarterback gets a little jittery, play breaks down. Zimmerman will take off and run with it. Not known necessarily as a runner, but we'll get what he can. And we'll gain four yards to bring up third and six. Bison will take that. At least Zimmerman was able to get out of bounds. Grant Olson, coach, there in the headset. You know, coach Kramer right behind him. Linebacker coach helping signal in the plays, Grant Olson. Coming back from Indiana State where he spent the previous couple of seasons under Curtin Mallory. Did a nice job there building up that linebacking core. Third and six for the Fighting Hawks. The noise level going up a bit too. McKinney flares out. Ma dropped it. Not sure he would have gotten anywhere had he caught it, but Jabril Cox put a lick on him at the end of that play. Wide receiver screen into the short side of the field. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Yeah, Mog forgot rule number one. Catch the ball. It's only about 20 seconds off the clock, too, wasn't Not it? Not much. And North Dakota State does have all three timeouts. Get it out, get it out. Peterson booms it away. Height will call for the fair catch again at the 29 yard line. Yeah, NDSU has plenty of options here if it wants to get aggressive with the timeouts, as you mentioned. Trey Lance's number so far here this afternoon, six of eight for 74 yards and a touchdown through the air. He's also run it 11 times for 69 yards and a score. Most of those are designed quarterback runs as well. Ty Brooks trying to squeak through a hole and unable to do so. Honey Hawks did a good job stacking things up in the middle so far here this afternoon. Excuse me, Cofield is your carrier. I like how Randy Hedberg, uh, you know, we've talked about it. he's, you know, he meaning Trey Lance hasn't played, but Coach Hedberg, his position coach, said, I expect him to be good because he's prepared. Eyes are not showing any sort of. Hurry up here at all as Cofield gets another carry and gets up to the 34. And that might be the last play of the first half. No reason for the Bison to snap it now after you run your your couple of running plays, unless you want them to take one last heave downfield. But I don't think so. No turnovers in this first half. North Dakota State has run 35 plays. North Dakota 28. Good look at Coach Entz. Ryan will talk to him in just a little bit. That'll take us to the end of the first 30 minutes. 21 7, North Dakota State. Buys it off to a fast start. Matt Entz may have eluded us. Yeah. Matt showing his speed, I guess. <laughs> oh, here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Still oh, yeah. getting yes. used to this. That's whole right. Thing. As the head coach, I need to talk to Ryan. <laughs> and he is standing by with Ryan. Start for your team. Got on the board early offensively. It's been going well. Yeah, doing a nice job. You know, I'd still like to see us do a little bit better on first down. We're getting behind the sticks. Too many second and longs right now. Be a. Uh, you know, just stay ahead, you know, keep moving the ball. I think we're doing a nice job. We're going to hopefully we can continue to wear them out a little bit with some of these long drives. Defensively, they've thrown now 17 times. You haven't gotten to the quarterback. That concern you at all or anything you'll change? A little bit. We haven't brought a whole lot of pressure either, though. Uh, you know, as long as we keep them out of the end zone, ultimately that's what's going to help us win games. Good luck the second half. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Thanks so much, Ryan. 
21-7 is your halftime score. Stay tuned. The Proceed Halftime Report with Beth Hool and Kyle Emanuel is on the other side of this timeout. You're watching the KBLY Campfire Bison Television Network. Almost set for the start of the second half here between North Dakota State and North Dakota. 21-7 buys and lead it after the first two quarters. And Ryan Gellner had a, having a chance to catch up with UND head coach Bubba Schweiger. Bubba, they were able to get you early a couple of times, but since then you really adjusted. Well, offensively, we've controlled the ball. That's helped our football team. Defensively, gave up a big pass play early. You just can't do that against this team. You know, you got to eliminate the big plays. And then we got to have better run support from the secondary. We just to allow too many big run plays. We got to make them earn it. Biggest adjustment you'll make the second half, offense or defense? Well, defensively, we got to play better. We got to play better. This first drive is really key to the game. Appreciate it. Best of luck. Thank you. Guys, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. And yeah, easier said than done. They, they have done a pretty decent job, though, the Fighting Hawks, of plugging up the middle for the running backs from North Dakota State. Nothing too major there. The quarterback running game has hurt the well, Fighting Hawks, though. Yeah, NDSU has really had a good success to that, that outside, a lot of that outside zone or the quarterback design runs over there. But uh, the physical nature of NDSU's offensive line, I thought, really showed in that first half. North Dakota State able to get off the field defensively. 3-3 three, three and outs in that first half from the Fighting Hawks. Did have the one nice long drive, but have to mean team that now here in the second half really critical that long touchdown drive not only the points which obviously you need but it was the fact that that offense from Bubba Swigert's team was able to stay on the field that was the part that really helped out his defense probably more than anything else a look at Matt Entz just his second game as head coach first time here in the Fargo Dome as the head man North Dakota will have the football first here to start the second half. Garrett Wagner will take care of the kicking duties. Boltman and McKinney back deep once again for North Dakota. Well, you heard Coach Schweiger stress the importance of this drive, this upcoming drive for his Fighting Hawks team. Another Peterson farm seed kickoff. Kickoff your planning season with Peterson farm seed. McKinney from his own four, tiptoeing around a couple of blocks and a decent return up to the 28. With Darsik, one of the Bison players down there, he took a nice little impact hit from UND, was able to adjust off it and get in on the tackle. And with Darsik, a true freshman from Naperville, Illinois. He also played in the first game as well at Butler, so he may be a candidate to play this entire season for North Dakota State. There's Zimmerman. Look at his first half stats, sponsored by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by Beef Ranchers. 10 of 17, 64 yards. Has not been sacked so far here today. Johannesson met immediately after getting the handoff. There was a couple of different buys and defenders in there. Cole Karch, first one there, I think. Karch made a nice move off to his right, kind of shot the gap and blew the play up before it had a chance to develop. Johannesson, seven carries, 21 yards. Did have the one touchdown for the Fighting Hawks. Zimmerman play action this time. Tuska getting chased. Zimmerman just heaves it up. And that ball looked like he was up there forever. Mod the intended target. A flag comes out. Hayes and Weber both over there with their hands up wondering what in the world is going on. Well, Josh Hayes is the one that got beat on the play, and then when he was trying to catch up, even though that ball was floating in the air, I thought Hayes made contact downfield about the 40 to try to prevent the big play. So I think this is going to be against There is no foul for Hayes. defensive pass interference. Okay. The ball is uncatchable. It's an incomplete pass. Third down. It so ruled have. uncatchable. <laughs> yep. That if, that ball, if that ball was in the field, then Hayes would have gotten the 15. But he didn't. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Zimmerman throwing off his back foot, absorbing a really nice hit there from the man. That's Derek Tuska, preseason All-American. Keeping Zimmerman healthy is really important for North Dakota. Their backup backup is a true, true freshman, freshman, Tommy Schuster. Third down and long. Here comes the pressure. Zimmerman didn't get much on it. Intercepted. Woefully underthrown, and Michael Tutsi has the first of this season and the third of his career.
pressure on the quarterback did not allow anything but a weak arm throw downfield and Tutsi was able to jump it. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Oh, who do we got? Spencer Wagey right in his face. Talbert with the uh, the corner on the coverage and a just dramatically underthrown ball. Tutsi with the easy pick. Here in Ma coming all the way to make the tackle from the back side. So North Dakota State with the momentum here in the football at the Fighting Hawk 28. Bouncing it outside. Room to run for Ty Brooks. But a really good open field tackle that time by C.J. Siegel. So redshirt freshman out of La Crosse, Wisconsin. He started the opener, and again, we thought we were going to see Evan Holm today, but apparently not healthy enough to go. And there's a look at Trey Lance. Strong numbers for him. Sponsored by the North Dakota Beef Commission. He's only had three incompletions all year to this point. Funded by Beef Farmers and Ranchers. Of course, his big one was the one down to Mathis, the 41-yarder. Design run for Lance. Working off a Phoenix Bulls block. Good job stringing it out. Was Hayden Bluebaugh, and Lance puts down the shoulder and picks up about four. That was the style of play where the Bison had a lot of success early in the in the year. Outside zone, hoping to kind of close off that edge. But actually, I thought Jade Lawrence did a decent job of making sure to string that thing out. North Dakota State, six of eight on third down so far here today. This will be third and four. Lance is going to run again. Sidestepping around one man, putting down the shoulder again, and he's got a first down inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line. Kennedy put a hit on him. This is an off almost a, an off tackle power play with extra help from your tight end. Noah Gindorf, number 87, is going to come in motion, and you're also going to see Jensen pull out in front. So that's the two. The power makes it with the guard pulling, and then Gindorf with a nice block on the edge on a third and four. Your team gets the first down. Back to a power formation. Now a flag comes out. Cofield in the backfield. Full start, offense, number 87. Five yard penalty, first down. That'll go on Noah Gindorf. Caught his first touchdown pass last Saturday against Butler at Target Field. 26 yarder. And you could put that into the wide open category because he was really wide open on that play. Actually, no, I'm thinking of the wrong touchdown. He wasn't wide open. Yeah, he had to go up and really make a yeah. nice catch. And I think Babbage. Josh Babbage second. that was wide open. Yeah, his second one, there was nobody within 10 yards of him. And now North Dakota State spreading some things out here on first and 15. Watson getting around the edge and then strong open field tackle there by the backup safety, Hayden Galvin. Gain of six. Interesting options on that play for Lance and two totally different things as you look at the Nodak Insurance Company replay. If he keeps it, you have the guard and the tight end pulling off to the right where Bison have had some success. This time he stays with the man in the jet motion. That's Watson. Not much there. Brooks finding a small hole. Kennedy right there to meet him and take him down at the eight yard line. Third and five coming up. We talked a little bit about the unsung nature of uh, a fullback's job. Check out 39, Garrett Malstrom. Kind of like a third guard, if you will, in this Bison offense. Rarely gets to touch the ball. Makes a block in the hole to help pick up a couple of yards, but kind of a tough spot here for the Bison on third and long. Ellison Gindorf now motioning to the bottom side of your screen here on third and six. Lance making a check. Lance firing on the slant, and that is broken up by Siegel. Intended target was Ben Ellefson. That'll bring on the field goal unit for North Dakota State. Extraordinarily well played by Siegel. Did not give up inside leverage. The Bison had two tight ends in this particular play. This is Ellefson further to the outside. 
just muscled himself into position. First field goal attempt for Krosa. Krosa's attempt is up and good. So far, so good for the true freshman out of Powell, Ohio. And North Dakota State extends its lead to 24-7. 10.38 to go on the A Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. Bobcat scoring a recap, seven plays, 19 well, yards. Pay attention up. to the guy who just stood up, Brian. Luke Works was one of the very highly sought after recruits. He actually had an offer from Kansas State. Said he's here at North Dakota State. Coaches just love him. Now the Peterson Farm Seed kickoff kickoff replying season. With Peterson Farm Seed. Well, let's go back, uh, if you will, to that uh, interview Ryan did with uh, Bubba Schweiger. What, what did Bubba call that drive? He called it critical. What happened? Their team is down by three points after they get the ball back. So that is exactly what Coach Schweigert did not want to see happen to his team. Let's take a look now at the Gate City Bank fan cam. Still not too late to submit your watch party picks. Show those in the third quarter. Fourth quarter, excuse me. Zimmerman rolling, firing on the run. Wanzik makes the reception and ducks ahead to the 30-yard line for a pickup of five. Well, we have called his name a lot less times than what you and D would have liked today. Bison have done a decent job of keeping Wanzik away from making big plays. 17 career TDs for Noah Wanzik, who was a North Dakota Mr. Basketball at Jamestown, was much more known for that. Played as a true freshman, came in with 138 career receptions. Six touchdowns last year in 2018. Mog is in motion. Give to Gordon. Boy, reading that perfectly was Marquise Bridges coming off the edge. I don't know that that play was necessarily called in the huddle, but it was an adjustment made by the buys and check out. It's number nine bridges flying in on a corner blitz. Why did he blitz? Because Wands at 31 rotated out across from his face to the left side of the formation. The bison rotate into a single high safety. Bridges reads the play and runs it down from behind. Third and six for the Fighting Hawks. Five receivers here in the formation. Pocket collapsing, Zimmerman flushed. Gonna try to run for it, and he's taken down a little bit short. Good backside pursuit by Spencer Wagey. Made a long run to get to Zimmerman, one yard short of the first down. Good look at Wagey right there. He did not have the opportunity to play last week. Bison held him out of that game to get him up to full speed. Dealing with a little bit of a stress fracture in his foot the last six or so weeks. But he said it feels really good and ready to go today. Yeah, it's just a little broken foot. <laughs> Peterson on to boot another one away, and this one high, but short. Slipping was height, so he let the ball go, and it'll take a North Dakota hop down to the 22-yard line. But at least he was able to clear his body to stay away from the football. 8.35 to go here in the third quarter. North Dakota State leading 24-7 on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. The Bison offense will take over on its own 22-yard line, leading by 17. Well, not much has been in the middle for that rushing attack for North Dakota State. Another tackle there for Donald Rogers. Been very busy today. Looked like Zach Johnson was trying to pull on the play and didn't get all the way across the backside of the center to get back up into the hole. Just a yard that time on the carry. Lance swinging it out. Ty Brooks with the reception. Stays on his feet and gets across the 30. And he has a first down up to the 33, maybe 34 yard line. Buying, building, or refunding.
financing. Start with a Gate City Bank Blue Standard pre-approval and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCity.Bank. For a better way of life, member FDIC equal housing lender. After Brooks was able to step through, put that hand down to help regain his balance and then pick up the first. Round game again. And some room this time up the middle. Adam Cofield picks up 11 yards. There are some white jerseys that just disappeared from the formation. All these guys are out of here. The Bison were able to just clear the path for Cofield to pick up the first down. Obviously, India or UND slanting a little bit that way, but the Bison just taking them and wiping them completely off the play. Carson Schooning and company up front. How about this look? Okay, now the whole shot out of it. <laughs> I wish they would have stayed in it just to see what would have, what was the play call. Lance will throw it. Cofield is open as a receiver. Moved into the slot, and he keeps on his feet. Some nifty running from Adam Cofield all the way down to the Fighting Hawks 32. Andre Steiger, number 50, goes out head up, man up against Cofield, who's playing in the slot. Oh, you'll love that combination every time. It's a simple pattern, a little bit out, but then Cofield is able to turn it up before the linebacker can get there. And Rogers had to run a long way to make that tackle. 21 yards on that pickup. But that's the quarterback making the right read. He understands that he has running back on linebacker in the slot. Lance had to juggle the snap. And now he's in a little bit of trouble. Lost a yard. We'll bring up second and 11. Let's go to Ryan Gellner. Guys, you may be wondering why Dimitri Williams isn't in there. The running back has a groin injury. His return, I'm told, is questionable. First International Bank and Trust sideline report. Thank you, Ryan. Whenever I see a defensive lineman laying with his back on the field, I'm always looking around to see who put him there. Number 53 was on his back because Zach Johnson took care of him on that play. Lance going to take off and run with it. Boy, the Fighting Hawks stack him up again for no game. A lot of white jerseys flying in there that time. Uh, Jalen Morris in the nose tackle, sophomore of Woodbury, Minnesota. Plug things up. Selling out on the A-gap. There's the fake. Steiger also finishing on that tackle. And Mason Bennett even coming in from behind. Trey Lance did with his eyes at this particular play. A corner blitz comes. As a quarterback, you are not expecting to see this. There'll be a corner blitz, number 13, flying into your screen right there. And then he readjusts, steps up, and then finds his tight end who does the rest to get in. That's a nice poised play by your quarterback. Noah Gendor, second touchdown of the season, 34 yards on the connection from Trey Lance. And the Bison lead is up to 31-7, 4.56 to go in the third quarter. Taking a look at the Bobcats scoring recap, seven plays, 78 yards, and a big play on third and long. Noah Gindorf making the reception and then outrunning the North Dakota secondary and breaking a couple of tackles for a second career touchdown. This one last week was a 26-yarder. This one is longest at 34. The Peterson Farm seat kickoff, kickoff the final season for Peterson Farm seat. McKinney, oh boy, he is taken down at the 18 yard line. And coming in, looking like a freight train, was Kobe Johnson, the true freshman. Let's pause for a quick message from the Bank of North Dakota. My plan was to get a degree in engineering. And with the help of a student loan from Bank of North Dakota, I did. If you want to build something solid, need a plan. Bank of North Dakota, helping you achieve more. 
Comes Zimmerman back out onto the field now as we take a look on the Nodak Insurance Company replay. How about oh. number 24? Yeah, how about Johnson? He averaged 10 yards a carry last week, this time getting it done on an open field special teams tackle. Quick drop off to Travis Toivonen. Should have enough for a first down up to the 28. From a family of golfers, his brother actually golfed at Concordia Moorhead here just across the river. Sister at Augustana came into this game with 94 career receptions and 23 starts. And Danny Freund said, Toivonen and Noah Wanzik, we really didn't want to have to play them right away as true freshmen, but we had no choice. And certainly they have delivered in their careers at North Dakota. And Travis averaged over 20 yards a catch last week in the victory for UND. Zimmerman to Wanzik, juggle a little bit, hung on. There was a lot of bodies in there. But it was zinged in there by Zimmerman, and that's another first down to the 40. And Jabril Cox playing head up against Wanzik in the slot. But boy, when he planted, he meeting Wanzik. Check this out on the Nodak uh, in insurance replay. Able to get that hips inside, go across the face of the defender. And that was a strong th throw. One of the better passes from Zimmerman today. The late handoff goes to Dalton G. A transfer from Butte Community College had eight carries for 65 yards against Drake. Led the team in rushing originally from Loomis, California. Mercadell on the stop. Pretty good tempo UND's offense right now. G again, tiptoeing his way through a hole, and a flag comes in late. Jabril Cox did make the tackle about a half yard short of the first down. Matt Beagler helped him as well. I think Bigler was first guy there. Personal foul. Illegal use of hands, hands to the face, offense number 76. 15 yard penalty remains, second down. That'll go on big 6'7, 296 pounder Matt Waletsko. And that'll back up the Fighting Hawks. Whether you're buying, building, or refinancing, Gate City Bank home loans are locally approved, financed, and serviced. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life, member FDIC, equal housing lender. What did we just talk about? The tempo and how the Fighting Hawks look pretty good on this drive, and boy, there's no faster way to wreck it than that. Zimmerman to throw. Throwing it up for Mog, beautifully delivered right on the sideline, dropping it in, and Mog makes the reception and a big gain inside North Dakota State territory to the 35. Marquise Bridges lost his eyes somewhere, lost track, was looking a little bit too much maybe into the backfield, trying to read quarterback, lost the receiver. Zimmerman drops it in there. on that connection from Zimmerman to Mog. Now G again. He is stacked up right away. There were Bison defenders from everywhere coming in to make that tackle. McCormick crashing down from his defensive end. I saw Mercadell jump in there as well. Of course, 42 is almost always around the ball whenever it's a running play. Zimmerman, Zimmerman now 14 of 23 for 121 yards in the one interception to by Tutsi. Zimmerman is looking out for his man. Christian Cochran, freshman wide receiver out of Michigan, and he broke off the route. Zimmerman threw it deep. Little stop and go. Bison brought pressure that time with a blitz coming up the middle. And UND did a decent job of picking that up. Third and nine. Clock down to five. G remains in the game at tailback. Zimmerman running out of time, and he will go down. Tuska from left to defensive end was the first man there. 
No blitz on this play. No DAC Insurance Company replay. Tusk is going to come right through the tackle. When we talked earlier about Coach Braun saying we want to go uh, right through the face of the offensive lineman, that's exactly what Tuska did on that play. Beat his man one on one, bringing the punting unit in. First sack of the day for North Dakota State. Fighting Hawks after the big passing play, chance to get some points, but the drive stalls out. Heights. His own 12 yard line will let it go. He had everybody beat out from North Dakota. Well done there by the junior from Pepin, Wisconsin. Been mostly fair catch today for him. He did not put up the fair catch signal and just drew the white jerseys around him. Time now for the Gate City Bank fan cam. Still time to send us. Your Homer watch party picks, and we'll show them in the fourth quarter. Cofield will start this drive as your tailback. We'll get the carry. Finding some room up the middle this time. Good strong run there for the junior. And Cofield coming from a really strong high school program. Blue Springs. Was a nationally ranked high school program. That's the combination of Johnson and Bolson on the right side, opening up that first down run. Cofield's father also played in the NFL. His father, Tim, standout collegiate career. Time was Kobe Johnson. Gain of a couple. Siegel's been active today from his corner spot. He has. He has played pretty much the whole day. And Brian mentioned it earlier. We we thought that Evan Holm would be able to play a bit. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Little bounce to the outside for Johnson, and if he is able to get clean, then there was just one guy to beat for a long run. So it was a critical tackle. Play action this time for Lance, dropping it off as a wide open man in the flat. And that's Garrett Malmstrom, senior fullback out of Freezy Burgess High School. Malmstrom does most of his dirty work, blocking for everybody else. This is a guy that came in here again, one of these players that they continue to find from this region. That does such a good job at fullback LT and you know he was a Minnesota State Championship wrestler when 48 and 0 was a heavyweight. <laughs> 31 7 is your score. One quarter to go from here in Fargo. Bison in control with the football. Back for the start of the fourth quarter, North Dakota State, North Dakota, the 112th meeting, series dating back to 1894. Bison with a 24-point lead in the football. First and 10 at the 40, Ty Brooks. Working off the block and then dragged down by Noah Larson after a gain of seven. That block he was working off of was number 61. That's Zach Kubis from Dickinson Trinity. He uh, has been in uh, on this entire drive at left guard. And Kubis came into fall camp the favorite to be the starting guard and then Nash Jensen just surpassed him made some big yeah. strides you see big number There's 61 yeah. there he is Zach right there Mason Bennett nice tackle from behind on Brooks no gain maybe well maybe a yard unbalanced to the near side which is a short side and the only thing Bennett has to make sure is that that handoff happens because if it's a quarterback keeper or something off to the other side. But once he sees the handoff happen he's able to close it down hard with his speed from the backside because he has very good speed. Good athlete. The Bison got everybody except one on the line of scrimmage. You see the three tight ends. Ellison Gindorf in there. Malstrom coming in and Cofield. Stepping ahead, lunging across the 50 yard line, and he's got enough for a first down. Let's go to Ryan Gellner on the sidelines. 
Hey guys, uh, following last week's game, NDSU Athletic Director Matt Larson addressed the team in the locker room in which he presented the game ball to Bison head coach Matt Entz. The team's reaction, as you'd expect, was pretty genuine. The ball is getting painted with the final score and some of the game details to comm commemorate Entz's first win as a head coach at any level. Entz told me it was quite emotional for him and very touching. He says the ball will have a home where it belongs in his office. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. And certainly a, a big moment, an emotional moment, as Cofield gets six more yards down to the 43. Through three quarters, NDSU had a 150-yard advantage on the ground, and that's where the Bison are really grinding now. Coach Entz watching his offensive line take over this game. And boy, Donald Rogers and Jordan Kennedy, those guys have been busy. Rogers has 15 tackles. Kennedy, that was his 13th. Johnson breaking away and then finally taken down. You see the footwork by this young man. Blue ball in on the tackle. Footwork, one of the keys to being able to run it in traffic. Coach Roll thinks and expects Johnson to get up to 200 pounds. Johnson again, patient running. See how well he breaks tackles too, LT. For being only 170 pounds, I mean, this guy runs hard. Well, how about the tempo here from North Dakota State? Yeah, Andy issue throwing a little bit back. Really look at all, look at all those people on the right side. There's going to continue to pound up front. Flag comes out as Johnson gets across the 20 down to the 17 yard line. But again, this may be coming back. North Dakota State penalized just one time today to this point. Offense number 59, 10-yard penalty remains second down. That will be the center, Carson Schooning. Carson saying this week, one of his best friends from Rolla, from where he's from, is a big UND fan, and they've been going back and forth a little <laughs> bit this week. But most of the guys you talked to you really tried to play it off. They didn't want to make a big deal out of it. Like, look, we haven't played North Dakota before. Does it have a chance to get back to where it was? Yes. Yeah, but Carson's from Rawl, as you mentioned, from Rawl. And when one of your friends is also from North Dakota, this game is a big deal. Yep. Brooks ripped up and taken down at the 30-yard line. Looked like try Ty tried to pop it to the outside, and his feet got caught up just a little bit. He sensed and saw a seam off to his left, and he tried to, tried to break it that way, and there was a lot of green turf off to his left. Quinton Seguin coming in, make that tackle. We talked about the four Canadians on this roster. North Dakota asked Danny Fern, where do you find these guys? So well, Winnipeg kids are easy. Yeah, they're close. We, we got to go other places, but he goes, it's, it's a very intertwined, very close group. So it, it's easy to find out when you get to know a few people up there. Goldfield taken down. Jade Lawrence from behind. A few guys at the bottom, including the nose tackle, Griffin Lickfelt. Well, that's certainly nothing new for, for UND. Over the course of the years, there have been some tremendous players from the country of Canada that have played football, obviously hockey, but I mean <laughs> that have played football at UND and gone on to have some successful careers uh, professionally back north of the border. Donovan Alexander certainly stands out. Scott Schultz played a long time in the CFL. Lance out of the shotgun. On the comeback, right on target to Christian Watson, who steps away from the corner. And then taken down at the 16-yard line by Kennedy. There's one on one on the outside. This is an isolation on our Nodak Insurance Company replay. Watson's able to try to sell the deep ball, come back on a nice timing route, beat your corner, and keep your team on the field. Well done. That was actually Cam Hunt coming over from his linebacker position to make the tackle. Even blue ball on the coverage. Mathis back into the game. He had the big 41-yard reception earlier in the game. Looking for room and not finding much. Is Ty Brooks down to the 14. Brooks 13 carries, now 38 yards. 
Trey Lance, the leading rusher, he has 15 attempts for 81 yards. 240 total rushing yards for North Dakota State. Shouldn't shock you a whole lot, I don't think. Johnson in motion. And Lance is going to keep it. He's got room to the outside, and Trey Lance has another rushing touchdown. Sure looked to me that Lance made a real nice adjustment at the point of the attack. I think the play is actually designed to be the quarterback run off tackle. He saw that plug a little bit, made a nice adjustment to the outside. It was free, and he has the speed to get there. Throws on for another extra point. Knocks it through. And North Dakota State increases the lead to 38 7, 9, 23 to go here in the fourth quarter. Trey Lance continues to get it done. His second rushing touchdown of the day from 14 yards out. Are we saying? 14 plays, 80 yards, eight up seven minutes on the clock. There's your grinder drive, huh? Trey Lance, six touchdowns last week total, this week four. <laughs> Not a bad start to your career. Another Peterson Farm Fair seed kickoff. Fair catch. Kick off for planting seed. Planting season with Peterson Farm seed. McKinney. Fair Taking catch. the fair catch. We'll show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and check card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. Fighting Hawk offense, 170 total yards, just 49 of those on the ground. Brock Boltman. He's going to play quarterback. In the game of QB with McKinney on his side. Justice Kelly in the game of defensive end, Tony Pierce as well. McKinney gets the call, and the Bison just swarm number one. Well, what makes this a little bit different than the Wildcat is because Boltman is in there to play wide receiver. Zimmerman's not in the game. He didn't line up somewhere else. He was on the sidelines. Now those two will switch out. Zimmerman's back in at quarterback. Aaron Mercadell getting in there first. Junior out of Oakland, California, was able to get a medical hardship and get a sixth year. So instead of being a senior, only a junior. Zimmerman across the middle, right on target. Well delivered there to Noah Wanzik, who gains 12 yards and has a first down to the 37. Wanzik's going to gain a lot of yards this year in plays similar to that, where he's able to sneak a little crossing pattern behind the linebackers in front of the safeties and make a what's generally a pretty tough catch because you know you're going to get hit. Wanzik now six receptions for 46 yards on the day. 144 now career receptions for the senior out of Jamestown. Mog sets down, makes the catch, another first down. Gain of 14 before the tackle is made there by Tutsi. The Bison brought the corner blitz. Yep, that's the reason he was so open is because Josh Hayes, number 14, was playing press coverage. This is Josh right down here. He was right next to the receiver, then bolted toward the quarterback, was read correctly. McKinney. Taken down, Dawson Weber came flying in from his safety position. Nice open field tackle, loss of two. Weber's been playing that free safety spot ever since James Hendricks had to go to the sideline. Young man that was committed to Sacramento State. Bison found him out there, offered him, decided to flip his commitment and come to Fargo. Hometown is Elk Grove, California. Tipped and it's intercepted. Tutsi has his second. And a flag comes in. The flag would be after the possession change. 
Interested to see. I didn't see it in live action. It happened so fast. Who got the mid on it to tip it? Bison should keep the ball. To see, assume it's some sort of personal foul after the whistle, as you mentioned, LT. There are two fouls in the previous play, both after the interception. Personal foul, unnecessary bl uh, roughness, blindside block. Number 55 of the intercepting team. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul. After the play was over, sideline warning on the North Dakota State bench. There's no yardage assessed. At this time, it's only a warning. First down, North Dakota State. Again, a point of emphasis, and we talked with Jeremy Valentine before the game, the blindside blocks. Here's a look at it. I think that was Jake Cava. Yeah, Cava, 54, yep, is the one who got the hand on it. Richard, freshman from Moorhead, Minnesota. This high school ball is Shanley. And listed as a defensive end now, instead of a linebacker. And opportunity to get that young man on the field a little bit more. Johnson, sidestepping one man. <laughs> Kobe Johnson. He's a fun young man to watch. Not easy to bring down. Mason Bennett hangs on to him after a gain of a few. A flag came out very early in that run. I saw a hold. Holding. Offense number 67. Ten-yard penalty remains first down. Cordell Volson, junior offensive tackle. It was funny talking to Tyler Roll about Cordell. He goes, he's out there. He just reminds me of a little puppy. He just loves playing football so much. He loves so much. it so much, yep. You know, just like every time the dog brings the, the ball back, it's just like, throw it again, throw it again, throw it again. And... Uh, Cordell's a little bit of the same way. Let's run another play. Run another play. Boy, strong run there for Sabian Clark. First of the day. Up to the 41-yard line. Redshirt freshman. Well, obviously, when you get a run like that, there is some good blocks somewhere. I, I, I caught Hunter Lukey getting a pretty good lick in. Just behind the play. That is your Nodak Insurance Company replay. Clark, the red shirt freshman from Sioux City. Oh, stretch play. Well, the Cook's got this thing pretty strung out. Galvin coming up, make the tackle. <laughs> I thought I saw Garrett Malmstrom slip just a little bit, trying to make a block. And the, and the block he didn't get to was the one that kind of blew the play up. But Garrett is coming off, and he was limping just a little bit. And now he's got his helmet off, holding his left calf or down by his left ankle. Third and nine for North Dakota State. The buys a nine of 13 on third down today. Under six minutes to go. Kapoor in motion. Pressure coming on Lance. Flag comes out. He's going to take off and run with it. Eludes one man, and Lance is going to be very close to a first down, about a yard short. And again, we'll have to see what the flag is. Illegal formation. Five players in the backfield. Offense number 75. Five-yard penalty remains. Third down. Dylan Reedens. Back a little bit too far off the line of scrimmage. Yep, he's the left tackle, the outside guy on the offensive line to the high side. Now third and 14. So number 75. There, yeah, there. There's Dylan right there. He's back just a little bit too far before that play starts. So North Dakota had some issues with that on an extra point in the first half. Same guy was called twice in a row. Plays in a row. Lawrence came in on the rush. Johnson was there as the Bison tried to set up a screen, but North Dakota good pressure that time, and that'll bring up a punting situation. They also had Johnson fairly well covered as well. I think that was Seguin, the defensive end, that actually was that 
on in the coverage on the running back. He smelled screen early. Well, Bubba Schweigert's club will head back home next Saturday and host Sam Houston State. Yeah, UND's schedule tough. is tough. Eastern Washington and UC Davis are looming as well. Wegner boosts this one away. We'll take a buys and hop. Inside the 15, inside the 10, and well done there for the Bison Jr. punter from Lodi, Wisconsin. Ball is down by Hanky at the seven yard line. North Dakota State, 448 away from moving to 2 0 on the season and winning its 23rd straight football game. New quarterback in here for North Dakota, Noah Grover, junior from Phoenix, Arizona. Transfer, came in here, the late handoff. A little bit of room there for Gordon. Gains a few. Both teams getting some backups into the game here. Lance Tucker in on the tackle, number 60. Defensive tackle from Gillette, sophomore. That's a good look at Lance. Oscar Ching also in there, number 94, a converted fullback. Came in from Castle with South Dakota. Costner played much earlier than now. He, he, he got into a fairly early rotation in the first half. Guys, it's stacking things up. G on the carry. James Kayser make that tackle. We talked about. Ching, a dad that played at South Dakota State, a cousin that played at South Dakota <laughs> State, and a, another cousin that played volleyball at LSU, so a very athletic family. Kayser <coughs> from St. Cloud, played at Tech High School. Playing a linebacker position most of the day. Still in there at linebacker. up for a first down making the reception was Christian Cochran just a little slant just a couple of uh, steps and then in and Trey Fort playing corner Bison at this stage of the game with a nice lead three and a half minutes to go he's not going to play in your face press coverage or anything like that so if, if UND wants that play again it'll be there again well, Trey Fort has been a special teams ace the last couple years came in as a walk on from Shanley High School had a really good career there. Boy, room up the middle for G finds a crease taken down after a gain of eight. Well buying building or refinancing start with a Gate City Bank blue standard pre approval and experience a better home loan get started today at GateCity.Bank. For a better way of life, member FDIC, equal housing lender. G again. Stopped in his tracks, no gain. So used to seeing Levi Jordheim wear that number. <laughs> yeah, it's Michael Cardis now. <laughs> Richard yeah. Freshman from Alberville, Minnesota. Uh, Mitchell Cardis, when he came in here, I believe had a, a knee injury in his senior season and had to work back last year to get back to full strength, getting an opportunity here to play. Well, this copyrighted broadcast is property of North Dakota State University. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or distribution without the consent of NDSU is strictly prohibited. Timeout, Fighting Hawks. Charge timeout, North Dakota. They're first to the half. North Dakota again timeout. will head home one and one. Chance to pick up a win before the Fighting Hawks jump into the last year of the Big Sky play that they're playing as a non-conference slate this year for joining the Missouri Valley in 2020. Back in a moment. One fifty-five to go. Third down and short. Boltman dropping it off. It's another catch for that true freshman from Michigan, Cochran. That'll move the sticks. Bo Pauly in on the tackle, playing linebacker. Meanwhile, LT and I and the rest of the KFYR, KVOI, Bison Sports crew will head out to Newark, Delaware next Saturday 
furthest east that North Dakota State's ever, ever played, played a game. And I've never been to that state. Have you been never, there? Yep, yep. I've only, the only two I got left is New Mexico and Rhode Island. We should drive up to Rhode Island. We should far drive away. up there. We were flying into Philly. That's not really too close, not conducive. No. Here we go, Bison. Well, the Bison defense continues to swarm in, keying in on the running game, and that, that was kind of a, that, carry. that was kind of a lengthy answer to your question. That should I should have just said yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Have I been to Delaware? Mark Stump coming into the game. Mark played for Bismarck High, redshirt freshman. His brother, outstanding career here. But MJ played at Harvey. And MJ, um, I believe, moving to Frisco, if he hasn't already. That's the plan. Good jump stop. That'll be enough for a first down, 25 seconds on the game clock. It's been a fairly quickly played game. Started at 2.30. And I mean, the Bison took some shots and had some success passing downfield, but when you're cranking out 266 rushing yards against 158, and NDSU had some nice drives in this third and second half to close this game out. North Dakota State. Wins the 112th meeting all time between these two old rivals, 38 to 7. And the next time they play, it will be once again as conference opponents. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. It'll really count then, and that's when this rivalry, I think, will really start again in earnest when these games are conference games beginning next year. And they'll play here next year before the rotation. First trip to Grand Forks scheduled for 2021 at the Olera Center. This one today has been a little wet, a little dreary. Announced at 18,923. That young man right there is off to a tremendous start in his collegiate career as a starter. 11 of 15 for 162 yards and two scores. He rushed for 95 yards and two more scores. And the Bison picking up right where they left off in 2018. Well, there's a lady who has a sign that says we don't rebuild we reload and there's a lot of truth to that considering the vast number of seniors that graduated and uh, half the coaching staff heading to K-State. Chris Kleiman by the way we should mention has moved to 2-0 and as the head coach at K-State a 52-0 victory over Bowling Green today so Chris Kleiman's winning streak is also intact. Ryan Gellner is standing by with Matt Ince. Coach, you really dominated the time of possession. I, I thought that was really telling in this football game. It was. We challenged our offensive uh, staff, challenged our offensive players, stay on the field as long as we can. Uh, you know, we're, we got a physical group up front. We feel like we can run the football. We're effective at it. Just got to stay ahead of the chains. Uh, they did a nice job in converting on third downs as well. Trey did a nice job running the ball, passing, found nine different receivers again. He's really been able to spread it around. When's the last time you said that? We found nine different receivers in the game. You know, he's just, he's he's taking what defenses are given, and he's not trying to press right there. The other thing that I really love today, I saw him pull it down and just take off and run. It wasn't there. I'm going to make something happen with my feet. And then defensively, just one hiccup all day. A pretty good game for your defense. Yeah, it was okay. I was a little frustrated on that series, of course. We had to make some adjustments at halftime. They did a great job, Coach Braun and the staff. Uh, we still got to continue to get better on third down. Win number one at home. Congratulations. I appreciate it. Thank you. Guys, back upstairs. Well, coaches are never happy, but giving up only one touchdown this week and one touchdown last week, Bison defense off to a pretty good start after some of the players well, lost. Well, remember it was a, oh, it was a touchdown, was a touchdown. defensive touchdown last so week. So that was the first, only one touchdown given up here so far in 2019. We're back to close things out. 38-7 is your final score. North Dakota State has won 23 straight games. And the Fighting Hawks dropped to one and one on the season. Back in a moment. Seven, the final here from Gate City Bank Field at the Fargo Dome.
North Dakota State improving to 2-0 on the year as North Dakota drops its first contest. And uh, Brian Sean Lee Timmerman with you. Thanks so much for joining us all across the KVLY, KFYR, Bison Television Network. Lines of scrimmage, we knew were going to be a challenge for North Dakota. I think that was evident in this contest on both sides. I think if you look at the offensive efficiency and the uh, the yards gained per play in this particular game, that's where you're really going to see that because the Bison offense only ran 10 more plays than UND did over the course of the game, but almost 200 yards more production out of those 10 extra plays. So the Bison did control the offensive uh, line of scrimmage. It was a concern for defensive uh, coordinator Eric Schmidt, and I think that played out fairly early and fairly evident. You could see the Bison offensive line was really moving people today. Let's take a look at some of the uh, offensive highlights in this game. And, and North Dakota State got off to a fast start in that first quarter. A couple of big touchdown drives and really mixed it up with a lot of different looks. And a lot of different running backs. There's Dimitri Williams, and here is the second time in a row that Tyler Roll decides to go downfield, and Zach Mathis sets up this touchdown, and it's by Williams. And look at that push. There's the physical nature of the offensive line that we saw today. Andrew Zimmerman hung in there, delivered some nice balls when he had time but just could not string anything consistent together. Now Zimmerman ended up 16 of 27 with the two picks. Ray Lance sacked three times. I like Lance. He appears comfortable in the pocket, and that's a really good sign for the redshirt freshman. And there's another look at Williams, another strong run. He did nick up a hamstring. He did not play any of the second half, but this is what Lance is so tough, and this is what made Carson Lentz tough. Easton sticks up his ability to tuck the ball and run. Yeah, when you can do, when you can present that again, the line blew that play wide open. But uh, you put defenses at conflict when you have the multiple talents and the, and the ability to run, like Lance and those other two guys that you mentioned did. James Johannesson, leading rusher for North Dakota, 21 yards and seven carries. Shovel pass here to McKinney, Fighting Hawks. 68 total rush yards today. And Garrett Mogg, the leading receiver, six receptions for 76 yards. As I say, those were the plays that came on the really nice drive that Johannesson was able to get in the end zone. But again, the only time that UND was able to find the end zone today, that was in the third quarter. Christian Watson had two carries on the day, and the young man from Florida continues to make strides in this offense. And then how about this guy, Kobe Johnson? He's been a lot of fun to watch Mid the first two games midway, of his you know, Midway through fall camp, uh, we're talking about Johnson here as we see another nice little run from Trey Lance. The coaches were telling us, I don't know how we're going to keep this kid off the field. And that was just a nice little uh, deke, the, deke the defense for that easy uh, touchdown pass. Jackson Hankey, a tackle for loss on Mog. Again, comfort in the pocket. He got sacked on this play, but did he get really rattled with it? I didn't think so. I, 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 he's uh, Tyler Roll. When we talked to him before we uh, the game last week, he talked the, the line he mentioned was, "We're going to have a race to maturity. How fast are these young kids going to mature?" And when it's in terms of Trey Lance and some of these other kids, it's happening pretty fast. I think faster than maybe some people mm -hmm. anticipated. Let's take a look at your staff from the, the North Dakota Certified Seed Producers. 238 yard rushing advantage for NDSU on the ground on those 50 carries. And that was kind of uh, what we've seen a lot of the Bison, uh, especially last year, you build a nice lead through the first three quarters and then just try to, to pound it and get uh, some of the other guys some reps. But uh, definitely lopsided uh, in terms of plays, yards per play at almost seven. So. Uh, Nothing about what we're seeing on the on the stat report uh, today surprises me. Both teams end up with 162 passing yards, but the dominance on the ground, major concern from UND, and it cost cost them the game today because they could not stop NDSU. Yeah, the, and the first two games, the one thing you've really seen, I think, from North Dakota State also is the efficiency on third down, keeping yep. the chains moving. And that's also always been a key here for this program over the last decade as well. We'll step aside and be back with more, including our Nodak Insurance Company player of the game. That's after this timeout. Thirty-eight-seven, the final. North Dakota State moving to two and zero on the season, getting set for the first road trip of the season, true road trip, out to Delaware next Saturday to take on the University of Delaware Blue Hens. Our Nodak Insurance Company. Uh, player of the game 
is a guy that has been around the football a lot in his first two seasons, and that is one of the defensive backs, Michael Tutsi. He is standing by with Ryan Gellner. Yeah, indeed he has, Brian. Michael, a uh, couple of interceptions today, seven tackles. You were really flying around. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was a lot of fun, man. I credit, credit all my teammates, you know, opening gaps, D-line opening gaps, linebackers making plays. Made it easier on me, but, uh, you know, it was definitely a great opportunity, great experience. You did have two interceptions, almost had three. One bounced just out of those hands. Oh, that one hurts. That one hurts, man. That, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to work hard and make sure that doesn't happen again. But, you know, uh, you know I'm just glad we got the win. Talk a little bit about this defense. You really had to step up on the backside with James going down, James Hendricks out. Uh, a lot of this game with a concussion, and the backside really held up well. Yeah, no doubt. No, uh, Dawson Weber came in and stepped up, and he played, he played a great game after he uh, coming in for James, and corners did well, you know, uh, and I, we played great as a unit. It is on to Delaware next week. Uh, how quickly do you savor this one and look forward to next week? Uh, you know, we'll, we'll take it all in tonight, celebrate, uh, enjoy this win. Got to, got to take, got to enjoy all of them. Um, and then, you know, Monday we're right locked into Delaware, going on the road. So we got to be, you know, raise our level of play. We're going there, ready to go. All right, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Appreciate thank it. You. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Thank you. Our NODAC Insurance Player of the Game. And now we're going to bring in Noah Gindorf, who uh, had another big game and another big touchdown. Two weeks in a row, two touchdowns in a row. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Take us through your touchdown. A uh, little bit of speed, a little bit of power, some some moxie moves. You put it all together there on that big touchdown run. Uh, yeah, you know, just just being on my spot on time, and uh, Trey gave me a good ball, and I was able to uh, shed a few tackles and get in the end zone. Trey found nine different receivers again this week. Pretty impressive how all of you guys are involved. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of depth, um, and you know, they can't really just try and stop one guy because then another guy will be getting open so uh, we got a lot of options and uh, Trey's doing a great job of just finding the open guy. This offense must be really fun to play in because there's a lot of off balance if you're a defense when the quarterback can run when you've got running backs that can go inside outside receivers that can stretch the field and then a bunch of tight ends that can catch it and block it's got to be tough to defend. It's got to be fun to play in. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and uh, t is doing a great job so far of just a great game plan for us. Um, you know, getting Trey going early uh, is pretty key, and, you know, running backs are playing well up, up front. Our, our line is doing awesome so far, and uh, we're making plays in the pass game when we need to, so it's been, it's been a lot of fun so far. It's quickly on to Delaware as the conference season gets closer. Another tune-up with Delaware. You start looking at them real soon, I would assume. Yep, on Monday we'll get going with them, but uh, you know, we'll just enjoy this victory tonight and, uh, yeah, we'll come back to work on Monday. All right, congrats. Two games, two touchdowns. It doesn't get a lot better than that. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Guys, a very excited North Dakota State locker room. We'll send it back upstairs to you. All right, thanks so much, Ryan, and what a luxury you can run out. Josh Babich, Noah Gendorf, and <laughs> yep. Ben Ellis, and three Giants out there. They can all block, and they can all uh, catch pass ball, catch as yeah. well. All right, we'll step aside and be back with a look at some of the Missouri Valley scores from around the country and wrap things up from here at the Fargo Dome. Back in a moment. Back to wrap things up here at the Fargo Dome. Bison. Players celebrating with their families and friends. 38-7 is the final. Brian, Sean, Lee Timmerman with you as we take a look at some scores from around the Missouri Valley. It was not a great week one for the Valley and some surprises here in week two as well. And case in point, Dayton over Indiana State was a surprise. Yeah, that's a topper because as the Sycamores really felt heading into this year that this was their year where they would break out maybe of the bottom half of the conference and make a play uh, for the playoffs. But, uh, ooh. If you're scoring 35 against Dayton and not winning, that is not a good sign. Another non-scholarship program out of the Pioneer. Youngstown State is 2-0. The road victory over Sanford and then a home win today over Howard. So both Pelini and company off to a quick start. Some other late starting games that are getting going here in Massachusetts. How about Southern Illinois? Seven point dogs on the road and they lead big right now on the road at UMass. And Western Illinois just six points down big at Colorado State. Northern Iowa, first home game. Oh boy, Panthers nearly had a big win over Iowa State last Saturday against uh, a big in-state foe. Three overtimes in that game too, Losing wasn't 29 it? 29-26, yeah. Northern Iowa, 24-0 over Southern Utah at halftime. And South Dakota, well, 
<laughs> a significant <laughs> challenge against the number four team in the country, Jalen Hurts and company. <laughs> Oklahoma, that one kicks off here in about a half hour from uh, now. Well, don't, you hope you don't get banged up too bad and collect the paycheck <laughs> and get out of town because that's why you're there. <laughs> Coming up next, we pack up the truck and head east to Newark, Delaware. About a half hour to the east of Philadelphia. First time we've ever been there. Looking forward to that one against a program that has had a lot of success and tradition as well. And a lot of tradition on their side. There's a team that came in here last year and kind of laid an egg. Uh, laid an egg. They, they uh, did not play well. The Blue Hens early. Jabril Cox had that interception that had returned, and, and it got worse from there for the Blue Hens. So you know Delaware on their newly renovated home field, home stadium, will want to have a much better showing this time at home than they had in this building last year. Press box not done yet, so I'm not sure where well, we'll be next Saturday, but it could be interesting. Here's a look at the upcoming schedule. UC Davis here in two weeks, and then a bye before Valley play gets started on the road at Illinois State. It's going to be an interesting start here to, uh, to Valley play with Northern Iowa and Illinois State, two teams that are vying for that Valley title. Yeah, two of the heavier hitters, I think, uh, heading into the Valley. I know we still have a couple of non-conference games to play, and then as Brian mentioned, that bye week. But, uh, you know, the, the Redbirds having to go there, I think that'll be a tough place to play. And, and you and I has always been uh, fun games when NDSU has played them in recent years. Well, the good news about going out to Illinois State this time of year is we're not going to have to deal Shouldn't with a blizzard <laughs> and a rainstorm and a hurricane and everything else that hit in Bloomington Normal yeah. the last time yeah. we were out hey, there. Hey, before, before, we, before we head out and we're about ready to say goodbye, I just want to give a shout out to James Kayser. I thought James Kayser playing a linebacker position today did a fine job. Nice to have some versatility of guys that can play in various areas. And North Dakota State certainly has that after the first two games of the season. Thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast all across the KVLY KFYR television network. We look forward to seeing you next Saturday afternoon at Delaware. We raised a banner. Matt Entz got his first game as head coach in the Dome and the Bison win it by 31 points here in the Fargo Dome. For Alex Egan, Beth Houle, Kyle Emanuel, Lee Timmerman, and our entire crew. I'm Brian Sean saying so long from the Fargo Dome. We'll see you next Saturday from Newark. Have a great Saturday night, everybody.